converted to fantasy political subterfuge right before your eyes. So there's just an endless broken record that is leading up to the present era that the Bush family has had a single goal for a hundred years, which is to become the most powerful family on the planet and to rule the world. It's critical that every citizen of this country rise up and do something because the day of reckoning is at hand and uh, these people are Nazis. They are practicing Nazi philosophy. They are mimicking Nazi tactics and time is running out. The Federal Reserve is a private banking cartel. The yeah, Fed is a sometimes very independent uh, organization. What should be the proper relationship between the chairman of the Fed and a president of the United States? The Federal Reserve is an independent agency. There is no other agency of government which can overrule actions that we take. They print our money and then loan it to us at interest. The IRS is their collection agency. So long as that is in place and there is no evidence that the administration or the Congress or anybody else is uh, requesting that we do things other than what we think is the appropriate thing, then what the relationships are uh, don't frankly matter. Jeff Duncan says he saw IRS special agents using semi-automatic rifles at a gun range. Now he wants answers to why the agency needs that type of firepower. Is this global governance at last? Is it one world? The central bank is in charge. Know your history and you will know your enemy. Infowars.com I'm not gonna sit here and take it anymore. It was almost as if it were a planned implosion. It just pancakes. Well, pancaking almost like a precision implosion. Reminiscent of those pictures we've all seen too much on television before when a building was deliberately destroyed, destroyed by well placed dynamite to knock it down. have the exclusive for which is a product called deep cleanse and why i'm so excited about it is it's a unique formula almost like the iodine crystals we have two unique products that nobody in the world has one of the most amazing ingredients in the world and it's called shilajit and it's actually known as blood of the mountain or rock sweat because thousands of years ago as a matter of fact this ingredient was only given to the elite of the elite thousands of years ago up in the himalayan mountains and in tibet and we wanted to put this in, in stuff for, for a couple years but we couldn't get an organic form right i mean so I, let's explain i mean we, this stuff's so good we couldn't put it out for years. Right. So I had to actually, it's kind of like the iodine crystals, finding a source deep in the earth that we could get the cleanest source available. But in Tibet and in Nepal and in the Himalayan mountains, thousands of years ago, they found, they watched these monkeys. And during the summer months, the monkeys would go up into the mountains. Now you're being racist against monkeys. And they would pick this black substance from the mountains. And so uh, in Russia, they actually, it, it, it grows in Russia in the mountains and in the Himalayas and only in the summer. And Chilajit is actually the decomposition of seven, up to 7,000 different medicinal herbs. So it decomposes, all these different herbs decompose in the Himalayan mountains and the volcanic soil up there. And what happens in the summertime... So it's almost like an oil up, from... Yes, it's high in fulvic acid, it's high in humic acid. Because they're always claiming out. oil is really from decomposed a animals and plants. There is some oil that is based from fossils, but most of it's really abiotic. But So, so this is a true fossil uh, source? I mean, explain it to me. It is, uh, it's really the decomposition, like I said, of over 7,000 different medicinal herbs and plants. And, it, and with the rocks and the pressure deep in the mountains, it freezes and... And during the summertime and the pressures build it up, it oozes out. It oozes out. So it literally oozes out of the mountain. It's like rock sap. It's like rock sap. It's black and it's highly nutritious. Uh, even in the 1980s, when the Olympic athletes in Russia were accused of being on steroids, they found out that they were actually been given shalajit because it, it works as an anabolic as well. 
and it builds muscles. It's a big dose in there. The second big main ingredient in there is a volcanic zeolite concentrate. And this, what this formula is designed to do, the shilajit and the zeolites have a real strong negative charge. All the metals and chemicals and PCBs and VOCs have positive charges. So these go in, they grab it, and then they safely eliminate it through the body so you can become healthy. I mean, the, this is an amazing formula. I wish I actually had it, but because this was an exclusive InfoWars Life product, you're the only one in the world that has this formula now. And, uh, you know, there is going to be a limited supply available when you sell out because you can only harvest this once a year. How do people take it? How is it recommended that this be done? Just a daily, daily dose? Yeah, daily dose. Uh, the instructions are on the label. You know, of course, I, I kind of modify it for each individual. It depends on what your lifestyle is. I mean, the, honestly, the best thing to do is for you to avoid all these chemicals and toxins in your environment and try to identify them and start slowly reducing them. But personally, I, I'm going to probably take it every day, every other day, and I'll probably go with about a dropper full to maybe two dropper fulls. Uh, and I and I, li I don't expose myself to any chemicals. InfoWarsLife.com. Please also support our local AM and FM affiliates, support their local sponsors, or become a sponsor and spread the word because these aren't just great products. This is how we fund this independent operation. We're not taxpayer-funded like MSNBC or NPR, and neither is your local station, so support them, folks. This is a war. <laughs> We've heard from the politicians, we've heard from the pundits, and now it's our opportunity to hear what the celebrities have to say about the most recent GOP debate. I will thank you so much for joining us, Sean. Oh, thank you, Jakari. Now, oh, I love having you on. Now, before I go into your tweets, this is how I you know, found out how active you were in this debate. Uh, was there a clear winner or a loser in your mind with this uh, most recent GOP debate? Um, I'd say the Democrats were the winners last night. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. No, I mean, to, uh, I don't know. I guess I just got so uh, distracted by all the BS I was hearing. You know, um, I'm just an average person. You know, I'm not. I'm. I'm not inside baseball and the, you know, Beltway and all that stuff. It just. Uh, uh, I I have followed politics for a long time, and you know enough to know, you know what's going on, and I just. I don't know. I, you know, a lot of people are saying Ted Cruz won, and I just I find too much wrong with 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 um, pretty much everybody running. I mean, Rand Paul's the guy I want to I want to uh, root for, and even he. I mean, I don't I don't know what's going on with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as far as last night, I think Rand had a stronger showing than he had in you know some of the more previous debates. But you yeah. know, but I agree. You know, he could be a little, little stronger. I'll take a look at some of your tweets here. I have them here laying out on the desk, and uh, one of the ones you have is directed to Trump. It says, "You're correct, Mr. Trump. Drugs will not come through your wall. They'll go over and around it." Of course, this is referring to the statement he'll say, saying he's going to build the best wall you've ever seen. You know, he knows how to build. I guess he's sure. referring to his casinos and all that. And uh, you, it seems like you don't take that that promise too seriously. Well, I mean, they will. They'll go. They'll go around it. They'll mm -hmm. go above it. They'll go below it. They'll. Uh, they're going to get into this country as long as there's demand for it. Agreed. Um, I lived in Mexico for four years. Uh, I have a pretty good idea of what's going on with the American people, or the sorry, the Mexican people. Um, and uh, it. I mean, that's. It's pretty much wall, common I mean, sense. It's good. It's. It sounds good to uh, some people, um, but I don't think it's realistic. I agree with that, you know, because I just see the wall. It's another never-ending construction project. You know, it's all kinds of fallacies. There's that movie that uh, just came out, Sicario. I don't know if you had a chance to see that, but it's basically about how they dig a tunnel, you know, to sneak things in and out of the United States, and it's not that difficult to do, especially if you had the time. But the comments weren't directed uh, just at Trump. You also have another one here to Chris Christie. Uh, we don't have anything to hide, uh, quoting uh, Governor Christie from the American oh, people. God. And uh, I, I thought that was quite laughable as well. And you're saying, of course, you can't be serious when they say that they have nothing to hide from the American people. Yeah, and I said, Shirley, you can't, can't be serious. And I will call you Shirley, my airplane movie reference that probably nobody's getting right oh, now. Oh, I got it. I got it. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, I think that's completely laughable. Um I mean, Chris Christie, I, first of all, um, 
I mean, the, he's just, you know, the guy's a really draconian uh, type uh, governor. I like, and from my point of view, I'm not, a, I, I'm not a big fan of his at all. Um, uh, and for, you know, and I, you know, how many times do we got to hear about he's, a, you know, that he's a, he was a federal prosecutor and this mm-hmm. and that. And um, I don't know. I just thought that that was a really, really um, ridiculous thing to say. Yeah, and also he was, you know, threatening to shoot down the Russian jets. Now, of course, we're not cheerleading for Russia. We're not cheerleading for Putin or no. anything like that. But when you say pretty cavalierly, yeah, I'd just go shoot him down, you know, like he's duck hunting. <laughs> That's really not exactly the kind of guy I want to see in office. It's, he, you know, it's easy to sit sit on a stage and, and say that to a group of, uh, to a captive audience that's there to see you, you know, and, and, uh, you know, shares a lot of your same beliefs. Uh, but come on, you can't run a country like that, especially like, uh, I mean, I was overseas when that, when that whole thing went down and, uh, with the Turkey shooting down the Russian jet, you mm-hmm. know, you, when you're not here in this country, you get a whole different, uh, view the news everything is different you know when i was when i was overseas how so uh just like the amount of the amount of thing um you know they didn't really report much i like on fox news here or cnn or anything you know you, you really didn't uh hear that uh the russian jet had its own the, the russians had their own flight trajectory that showed the russian uh jet uh, going around Turkish airspace, um, whether that was a lie or not, you know, who knows? Uh, but you never even saw it reported here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do agree. I do agree. And last but certainly not least, uh, you had a, a jab at Jeb, and you and you quoted him as he was saying that he wasn't an expert, and you co-signed that. Yeah, I had, I, and you know, Je- Jeb Bush was, as far as governors go in the state of Florida. Um, I'm a Floridian, and uh, he he seemed like an okay governor, uh, but you know I think that George W. was considered an okay uh, governor in Texas too. Yes, he was. I, I don't think that worked out too well for us, you know. So well, we uh, see the whole Bush family, you know. You know, cause I'm I'm not on the Trump bandwagon, but uh, Trump did point out when they asked him about you know how he treats families of uh, terrorist suspects, and he pointed out very quickly that the Bush family flew out the Bin Ladens on 9-11. And uh, Jeb's yeah. response to that was basically say, that that disqualifies you from running because you dare talk about my brother. Yeah, you dare tell the truth. And and, and just like when when Trump said, uh, when he pretty much called in, in like the first debate, he just called everybody on stage out and said, you are all, uh, uh, you know. Controlled. Uh, controlled and owned by your donors by the people that are giving you the money. And nobody could, not one of them could say, no, I'm not. Not one of them, mm-hmm. as, far as, I, as far as I remember. Yeah, I agree with that, because that was the thing that was most notable to me about that debate, because everybody talks about you know how he got in a fight with Megyn Kelly and Rosie O'Donnell and all this other stuff. Yeah. But when he said, basically, he's the guy who calls him up, up on the phone at three in the morning saying, hey, I donated money to your campaign. This is what I need you to do for me. And they say, how high do you want me to jump, Mr. Trump? Uh, that's sure. very notable. Yes, because he was the guy that was doing the donating at one time. He's, a, you know, he's had these people in his pocket before. So it's, it's really hard for them to, to deny it, you know? Absolutely, and absolutely. I, and, and look, I'm not defending some of the rhetoric that, that Donald Trump uses. And, you know, like a lot of people will, uh, if, if you say anything good about him, will immediately jump down your throat, unfollow you on Twitter or whatever. But yes. like I've met him before, you know, he's mm-hmm. in the WWE Hall of Fame. Um, and, uh, you know, he's a cool guy. He, I've, I've, he's been to the shows and, uh, been sitting front row at the garden several times when we wrestled. Um, he's always been really cool, but man, some of that, you know, banning Muslims and all this stuff. I mean, it's just, it's a, and that does hit, you know, uh, hit home with a lot of people here, but I mean, I just think it's not good. (laughs) Yeah, I agree. Like I said, I've had similar experiences. Like you say something good or bad about a certain candidate, people want to jump down your throat. Like I said, I'll follow you on Twitter and all that stuff. Now, real quick, we have about two minutes left. You touched on the war on drugs, and you know, and that's something that's very uh, interesting to our audience. And I'm just curious, uh, do you have any 
thoughts and views on the war on drugs? Do you think it's a success, a failure? Should it be ended, continued? Any thoughts on that? That's kind of almost a rhetorical question at this point, isn't it, Jakari? Um, I think anybody in their right mind realizes the war on drugs is a complete